Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So are you stumped in how to do abstract landscapes and you really want to do a fall one? Well, I've got the tutorial for you today. And we're going to do all these techniques in this lovely tutorial. Wet on wet, wet on dry, scraping, you know, using texture with sea sponge, uh, your paper towel, all that good stuff comes into play on this tutorial. And you're creating this kind of atmospheric abstract kind of trees and grass and land all that good stuff if you have any questions leave them in the comment section also patreons get a little extra add-on for the video at the end so if you're a patreon member you'll find that in your patreon the extended version um, if you're not a patreon member you can click the link in my description box i have exclusive tutorials that are much longer than on youtube with more in-depth like traceables and reference photos uh, on the top tier i have a live stream once a month where you ask questions and we go over all kinds of different things that are not on anything else um you also get first dibs and watercolor workshops and retreats there's a facebook group a lot of extra plus things on patreon so just check out the link you can cancel anytime join anytime cancel anytime all that good stuff it's just a place people go and support my channel which i really appreciate um but i also get free videos here on youtube so Without further ado, if you're stressed and you want to paint something today and you want to paint a landscape, you don't want to feel like doing something really technical and detailed, this is the tutorial for you. So let's get started. All right, so to go over some supplies I'm going to be using, I'll be using Fabiano's 100% um, cotton cold pressed paper. This is a block. This is the bright white one. I got a new brush. We have a number 16 round Neptune series brush. Bigger is sometimes better. <laughs> so I'm playing with this brush today. Paints, of course, I go over as I use them. And as I use the brushes, I go over and talk about them. So when you're creating any kind of landscape, you have to figure out, this is all gonna be from like playing and there's no particular photograph I'm looking at. I painted so many of these kind of like abstract landscapes, so it's pretty easy. Um, you can choose to go right down the middle, a little further down, a little further up, whatever works for you. Um, you don't have to paint the whole entire picture. That's another thing. So, you know, play around with that. Uh, I'm gonna be mixing up some colors here. So it's good to mix up a lot of paint first. So I have my cadmium yellow deep, put some over here, and I'll grab my cadmium red light and get a nice bright orange. We're gonna be working with some yellows and oranges because it's fall. Hasn't The leaves haven't quite turned yet, but we're waiting for them. This is burnt umber, loosening this up, grab a little Paints gray to make a dark brown. I can keep the burnt umber itself right here. So we've got some browns. There's another color I like, which is called raw umber right here. It's kind of like a yellow ochre. Kind of fun to play with that color. Oop, I have a little peacock glue hitting it, so this palette doesn't have enough room for everything. So sometimes it gets a little messy, and that's okay. I'm sorry, it's not Rotten Armbar, it's Ross <laughs> Oops. Anyway, I'll put some over there. Um, there. So I'm really just gonna play with paint. If you're freaking out and don't know how to, where to begin, like a simple landscape, this is it. As you hear me cleaning my brush. Simple, like wet on wet techniques here, right? This is for those who are want to do something abstract and don't know where to start. Also, you can also play around with sea sponges, all kinds of stuff when you're doing abstract. It doesn't have to be just one simple thing, one brush, one paper, a lot of wet on wet kind of stuff. And I do like to mix up my sky. I'm gonna mix up some, I have no room in this palette now, um, <laughs> ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make a nice gray. The more blue, the more bluish gray. I'm gonna use the tip, of, oh, it's gonna get into my orange. Look, it's going in there, no. <laughs> Oh well, I'm going to start off with that color. I'm going to get this paper a little wet on this horizon area. I just kind of wiggle the water and I'm going across the top. You can see the sheen in the video. Like I said, you don't have to fill the whole part of it. Oh, the gray got into my orange. I'm just going to start to play with some gray. So the more wet it is, I think I'll have to mix up more orange and just deal with the gray first. Because <laughs> my palette is small. Don't you love my mess? It's the beauty of my 
like I wouldn't call it a live video, but it's basically like a live video. Let's see how it, I could cut this and not do it, but this is how it works in real life. So I'm trying to mix up really fast while I'm got the color here, but it's a little dark. I'm gonna move it around. Play with this color. I'm adding more water, grabbing more water. And I'm just gonna go down wherever the water is. Kind of mop it up over here. Yeah, gonna fill in this area here. I'm kind of leaving this without the gray. I'm gonna have to put some oranges in there. I can kind of mush it a little bit with some gray, but make it very kind of light. I don't want to put too much in there. And I really feel like this gray is a little dark, darker than I want. It will dry a little lighter, but I'm kind of gonna lift up some of this gray. I'll grab some water and put it in there and kind of lift it up some of it. And we can make it more mysterious and darker too. We can add some more paints gray, ultramarine blue. We can play around with this. Why not? It's a little thicker, so it's not going to move as much. Add some water. Playing. I don't care if it's even messy. You're going to have fun. So now I'm going to go back and mix up my lovely orange that I don't have. <laughs> There's the yellow and the red. I just got this really loose, a lot of water. See that? Woohoo! Just have to put some of that in here. I even grab some of the yellow. Because I'm thinking about putting some trees there. Just kind of pushing it around. It's not as bright as I want it to be. We can play with that. Just pushing the color around. I might even add some brown here. A little deeper with paints gray. It doesn't have to look like something specific, you know? If you want it even brighter, throw in some of this vermilion uh, from, this is the Hydra's watercolor. Look how bright that is. Yes, we can put some uh, inks in there. Well, they're not really inks, they're concentrated watercolor. Look at that, it's going to change that color. I'll add some bright yellow in there. I'm going to put some of that out here. I'm even putting in the gray, so it's going to change that gray a little bit too. Why not? And now I'm gonna turn my paper here and start to put some, I'm gonna leave a little white separation in between the gray and this part. This can go down into it, but not the gray. See, I'm gonna leave a little white and just gonna put the, the water in here. We can start to play with bleeding. Some browns. Look at that. Oranges, ooh, loving the abstract. Getting some of this yellow in here. I thought about putting like a little rose, maybe kind of separate this. Put some bright yellow in here. There's the orange. Again, I didn't get it to the gray. I'm just super close to it, but not touching it. There's that red. You can play around with these colors. It doesn't have to look perfect. Moving the color around, grabbing some water and moving it around, grabbing some browns, some deep brown. Look at that. Woo! This is so much fun. This is what you gotta do. You gotta have fun. This is your abstract fall landscape. You know? I'm gonna mush this paint around down here. Could add some browns over here too. Although I just like it one section like that. So maybe I'll just take out some of that brown and add a little more orange color to it. And some just yellow. Some bright yellow. Get rid of that blue that's creeping into my yellow. Abstracts are fun. There's no like right or wrong way. And that's why they're so amazing to play with. Um, you can't mess it up. <laughs> you just can't. There's no right or wrong way. So you're just kind of mushing the color in here. You sense that nice deep brown coming in here. 
it's very very wet adding that brown with the paints gray again a little more paints gray it's almost like black Let's see where that goes I can maybe splatter a little bit here Let's see what happens not too much just a little bit so it's very very wet I was thinking about a road so I'm mixing these guys together and you've got almost like a raw sienna color you can put the road just pushing the paint in there you can see kind of like a road happening or not you can have left that little white area I have an intention to do with some of these things like maybe some grasses and it's very very wet here you can kind of play with just kind of taking the tip of your brush and putting some paint down the thicker the paint the less it will move so I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker brown and I'll just wisp up with my brush almost like grass is happening get a little bit darker again thicker paint it won't move as much it's moving but it's not going to move as much Look at that intensity right loving it like I said abstracts can be whatever you want them to be I'm grabbing some more paper towels you can play with texture um, these are sea sponges all the sizes I have here and some have like more opening and some a little bit tighter this one's really kind of cool. Look at that. Can make some great leaves. So I'm making the orange again. You can make texture with that. Just tapping in. Sea sponges are fun to play with. Tapping in texture. abstract is supposed to be fun you're playing with many different things All right I'm gonna make some more orange paint again thicker I'm gonna splatter a little bit up here making a little bit of a mess and that's the fun of it All right and even grab some yellow it's going to dissipate because it's super wet. So don't think it's going to have these like little teeny dots and stuff. It's not. That's the fun. Put some orange down here. And then we can use a credit card or something to scrape up some grasses. Obviously, it's going to kind of stay where it's dry. This part is dry. Not all of it's going to be wet. You could put some trees kind of happening on the left hand side too slowly just tapping in it's still kind of very damp with that gray and it's going to change the color of that orangey yellow and just tippy tap with the top of my brush kind of like a not too roundish a couple little trees over here you could have some more brown in there if you want they're kind of doing their thing like that Thick of the paint too. Grab some thick yellow. It's gonna do its thing while it's damp. Grab that cadmium red light. Just a few, like one, two, three little blobs. I know. Kind of crazy with this little thing out here. <laughs> That's the fun of it, though. That's the whole fun of it make it too serious now the only time you scrape anything is if it's damp not soaking wet see how this has got a super sheen and this does too that's not ideal the paint can kind of fold right back in very wet here see watch I'll do a little one well sometimes not okay that one didn't so that's great the sheen shouldn't be super super super, super like this one's really wet you can see like the water it should have like a slight sheen to it. Look at that. Fun. And creating the grass just by scraping. See, this one was so wet. It went folded right back in. 
So it has a sheen. So if someone asks me, like, when do you know? Super wet. This one doesn't really seem very wet. So you could make a tree trunk. Make it a little thicker. It's still very wet up in here. Small ones in here. Do another tree. See, this, this area is not as wet. This one's very wet. That's how you can tell. When to tell. Very, very wet. Look at that. Very, very wet. It should be damp. That's damp. See how it's not super shiny? But it's wet. That's when you scrape. You can do little ones, little scrapes, grass. Na, 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 na. I know, it's so exciting. This one's still very shiny down here. Let's see. Eh, not bad. Depending on the, the corner has a nice rounded edge, so it's making a thicker scrape. All the fun stuff you can do. Going a little crazy here. Why not? Grasses. It's still very, very wet in here. And some of this might fold back in. As you see, some of these are folding back in, some not. Look at that. This is still very damp. I can still play with this too. I could take a paper towel and kind of tip tap, get off some excess and go back in and add. You want to texture, you can kind of do that with this also. Kind of scrunch up your paper towel and remove the paint. Creates a nice fun texture as you're twisting it. You can add salt. Um, I know it's not really true watercolor if you throw in gouache but maybe you're not playing with just true watercolor today. Maybe you're playing with um, just having fun. It will just change. Oops, my gouache doesn't want to work today, of course. It will just change the look of everything. And that's the whole point. It's supposed to be an abstract. It could be mixed medium. You could use white watercolor too. Try that. Now this is kind of dried up. Let's see how it splatters. You make it kind of look like little um, flowers. Just going back and grabbing my brush, loosening this up a little bit more. Bigger ones. I just love doing this. <laughs> I, as you can tell, I have another one I just did recently where I did this because it just looks so pretty. But really, it doesn't take much to do that. Those browns and the um, oranges has a nice look to it. it kind of looks like cotton. So at this point, it's still very, very damp. You can start to play with adding in color on your top tree area here. I'll just leave it simpler. Grab my big brush. I want to see how much I can bleed again playing with adding more color, even more darker depth with some browns. It's up to you how deep you want to get it. Even yellows. Some green in there. Taking yellow right almost right from the tube, it's a little wet. Just popping that in. And over here too. I feel like it was not enough yellow. Adding a little more. This is so easy. I know. You might say it's not. So how we left that white line kind of like really your eyes drawn to there. If you want to kind of slowly 
get rid of the line. Now that it's dried, you can kind of mush the paint. See? You didn't know there was a line there. Add a little of the brown up in here. None would be the wiser. Right? And then same thing over here. Kind of fill in those little areas. It doesn't matter if the color is a little similar and not the color you see below. You can kind of mush it like I'm doing here and then kind of finish it off out here. Even if it's a different color, it doesn't matter. Nobody was going to know. <laughs> going to put some browns in here. Just kind of wiggle some browns. Some will dissipate, some will stay. You can kind of move them. See, I'm taking my brush and tapping it back and kind of mushing some of the browns in here. Did you see some of them? A lot of orange happening there. You can keep it, remove it, play around with it. I'll put a little yellow in here. And that it's drying. You can see how it's unfolding. Got this big old tree here. These kind of like, <laughs> I want a little separation. It didn't quite happen. I can try and remove some paint, but eh, it'll be all right. And I'm kind of lifting it. See how I take the brush, twist it, and tap it back onto the paper towel. It's gonna give it like that sunlight hitting it. See, the paint will fold back in, but it's gonna be much lighter. Bit like that sunburst look, right? Just on the edge of each tree. See how I'm just grabbing it just on the edge? My brush is a little damp. I'm tapping back on the paper towel. I'm kind of twisting my brush, mushing it in some areas. So now it looks like sunlight is hitting it. It's kind of sweet. And we can kind of do that up here too. Lifting technique. This brush is maybe it needs to be a little bit smaller. I'll grab my 12. All the techniques in one the scraping, the bleeding, the lifting. See, I'm kind of twisting it. You can do kind of like a bokeh. But look, see how you twist and tap it with some fresh water on that paintbrush? Clean it off, tap it back, lift. I'm twisting my brush. And then you can create some nice. Depth. Didn't know you could do that, right? You can even just be cheaty. Cheaty, I call it cheating, but paper towel, do a little of that. Get it wet. Lift it up with the paper towel. It's going to lift up more of the paint. I mean, look at the look that's creating. This was like really just splattering paint and moving it around and lifting it up. And that's what it's all about. If you are not feeling well today, and if you're depressed or you're going through some stuff, just throw some paint down. <laughs> and look at the stuff you can create. Now I'm twisting it again. Create that texture. If you feel like it looked a little too much, don't try and overwork it by adding way too much color. Just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. Tippy tap. See, I'm looking and I'm thinking this area is a little too lifted. I'm getting some browns in here. And they'll dissipate a little bit. And so when you're satisfied with that, we're going to let it dry. And I'm just going to go in and add some branches. And we're pretty much done with our little simple, you know, abstract landscape. Now you're done with everything. Go in, throw some branches. I actually got another new brush. And then before, uh, Velvet Touch series. I know people are like laughing at me that this is such a tiny brush for me, and it is. And I don't know necessarily I would use this for branches, but let's try. And so I'm mixing burnt amber and paints gray, get a nice brown. So you kind of just take little sections out here, and you kind of go in and and put some branches. 
kind of coming out. Just like that. You don't want a million of them, but you want a few. And the top should be pretty wet. I didn't do a little dry brushing, but. And then, of course, let me say the highlight behind the side of the, the tree. We made it kind of like a birch tree. So we can kind of just go on one side and then kind of put out some branches. And you can add some other trees too if you wanted to. Just a bunch of like dark trees in here. Just to change it up a little bit. And then of course on the side over here you add the tree branches, really tiny because this one's much smaller. And kind of poking through. Just like that. Poking through. And there you go. We can add a few back here too. That's that. And you can add more things or whatever if you want to. Don't have to. Change out the brand, uh, the this part. If it didn't seem like there's enough leaves, you can go back in and add. I'm kind of out of my yellow, but I was just going to twist my brush and add in some little leaves. I feel like if you washed out too much of it. And that's it. That's it. And have fun. Yep. So there you go. You know, it doesn't have to be that that intense when you're doing an abstract. Just kind of washing in color, splattering color, removing color, tapping in color, scraping color, <laughs> all the good stuff. So enjoy, guys. Have fun. Don't stress out about it. And just play with color and play with wet on wet and all that good stuff. And take care, and I'll speak to you soon.